Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. I'm a lawyer in Northern California, so I'm going to choose my words carefully in this video. Let's talk about the Ryan Braun situation. I'm just going to detail Major League Baseball's allegations. Right, They're claiming that after game one of the National League Divisional Series, they tested Ryan Braun. The test protocol they followed required Ryan Braun to submit a sample and to verify that the sample was his in writing. Now apparently, according to Major League Baseball's drug policy, they were to then send that sample via Federal Express to the testing facility. Because it was too late on a Saturday, the tester took the sample home. Apparently this is common in baseball. The tester took the sample home and then put the sample in a refrigerator until Monday when he sent the sample in. Now the sample had synthetic testosterone in it. You don't come back from a positive synthetic testosterone test. Right now what Ryan Braun's group of lawyers argued was simply that the chain of custody violated and the protocol violated Major League Baseball's official policy. Their argument is simply that the test should have been immediately delivered to Federal Express and that we don't know what happened to a sample from the time he gave the sample to the time Federal Express received it. Right? There's no proof of any tampering of any kind. Right? The argument is simply the players had an agreement with the owners to follow a certain procedure and that procedure was not followed here. I think regardless of what was decided by the arbitrator, I think the public, again I'm choosing my words carefully, I think the public here believes that something wrong happened, that there was synthetic testosterone taken and that the defense here is a highly technical defense and not really one that disputes the fact that the tests found synthetic testosterone, right? No explanation has been given, none, as to why a test that was signed and affirmed by a sample that was signed and affirmed by Ryan Braun would be changed by people while in Major League Baseball's custody. Right? No explanation whatsoever. The argument is simply, I gave you my urine, I know it was clean, right? You didn't follow the proper procedure. I think some battles are not worth fighting. I think if you're a Major League Baseball player, and again I'm choosing my words carefully, if you're a Major League Baseball player and you test positive for synthetic testosterone, right, I think the public is not going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I think fighting a positive test for something that clearly could not have gotten into your body, 
unless you were cutting corners, diminishes your performance, it undercuts your stats, and it raises suspicion about the credibility of your accomplishments. And so the way I see it is that a very technical chain of custody defense seems to have undermined Major League Baseball's drug testing policy. And what's going to happen now is, in my opinion, what happened to Barry Bonds. I'm a huge Bonds fan. I'm here making this video wearing a Giants jersey, right? But even I know that Barry Bonds does not belong in the same sentence with Hank Aaron, right? Once you have synthetic testosterone in your body and you're randomly selected for a drug test and synthetic testosterone is found in your urine, then in my opinion, it really does become almost like an arrest for driving under the influence. You know, it's hard to believe that you would be driving under the influence just that one night, right? If you're randomly stopped by a police officer and you're driving under the influence, then I'm going to believe that this is a custom and practice and that you just happened to get busted that one night. Not that that's the only night in your life when you've driven under the influence, right? I think, my own opinion, that Ryan Braun is going to have an awfully hard time, and I mean awfully hard time, convincing the baseball public that his numbers are real. He's going to have an awfully hard time convincing the baseball public that his numbers from last year are real. And I think, unfortunately, this is almost like an OJ situation where the guy gets off, but we still view him as not innocent. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.